Hey, I'm Dave. And I'm Mike. We're the NF Geeks. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. And what are we going to talk about, Dave? The Myers-Briggs. That's right, because we haven't talked about it enough. <laughs> um, well, for this episode, I really have a very fascinating topic to talk about, and it's also going to be controversial. I'm sure everybody's going to have an opinion on it, uh, for sure. And that is, is what I've been thinking in my head as the Myers-Briggs Republic. <laughs> Meaning, what would a society look like if it was ordered using the Myers-Briggs? Hmm. And what kind of utopia or, or utopian society could be achieved by use of the Myers-Briggs? Meaning that if we have these personality um, temperaments and these personality traits and values and orientations, if everybody was working in, you know, um, was working sort of parallel to them instead of working against them, and we put them in some sort of organizational pattern, would we live in a better society? Hmm. You know, that's the question. And um, it's poignant because this week, as you know, Dave, in philosophy, we were talking about utopias and dystopias. Right. You yeah. know. So, um, so what are your thoughts on this? Um, well, as you know, Mike, in that class I pointed out how the, the process to and the structure of utopias and dystopias are eerily similar. Mm. So, um, I'm wary of, of utopias, in the physical world, anyway. And I feel like a utopia, an actual utopia would transcend the physical world and be like a collision of souls. <laughs> but that's just a, a rant for another time. <laughs> <coughs> but, um, I don't know, I feel that um, it could work out that certain types are more adapt to things a lot better than others. So I feel that it could be in their best interest to do things, but I, I, I um, this is my pee talking, um, but it could be like um, some people could see it as you know like typing, you know that uh, well you know why limit a uh, a uh, uh, temperament to just one thing? But it's just like well would <sighs> I don't I don't know I don't even know where I was going. So, I don't know, would an NF want to work the same hours as an SJ, or would, like... Well, of course not. And would an NT want to, I don't know, master a craft as much as an SP would? No. Um, and therefore, that's why perhaps it, we should, for a better ordered society, we should have a specific organization of where people are and who's in relation to whom, mm -hmm. um, so everyone can be a lot happier and have a more efficient society. Right. Perhaps the Myers Brig could could be um, a vehicle to that. Hmm. So, for example, um, as we're, we're going to get right to the controversy right now, uh, the in, in the actual republic, the the, the Platonic dialogue, the Republic, um, Plato through Socrates and you know the other people talk about um, in a society ordered in a way that's macrocosmic of the of an ordered soul. So, for Plato, the ordered person is somebody who is ruled by the virtue of wisdom, and wisdom rules over their courage, the virtue of courage, and courage rules over the virtue of temperance, okay? And an ordered society would reflect that, that same parallel hierarchical structure. So, that's where you get the philosopher king. The, um, an ideal republic would be ruled by philosopher kings, um, who rule because they are wise, and that's what gives them the right to rule. Um, underneath them would be sort of the guardian warrior class who would carry out the dictates of the, um, of the philosopher kings. And of course, their main primary virtue would be courage. And underneath them are the tradespeople and everybody else, the common people who are, you know, practicing temperance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, one way to look at this hierarchy is through the Myers-Briggs. And... If so, it makes me think that perhaps Plato was an NT, because you could look at it as on the bottom are the SPs, okay? There would be the tradespeople. The SJs are the guardian, of course, the middle part. And then NFs and NTs are sort of in that philosopher king zone. Although NTs, often when they talk about this, I've heard talk, NTs apply the Republic to, uh, maybe Myers Briggs to the Republic. NTs always sit on top of that order. Right. It's always NT, NF, um, SJ, SP. Hmm. Um, about that. 
So I have some feelings about that particular order. I don't know if you do. <laughs> Dave? You know, well, it goes for anything, really. People just want their want their temperament to be at the top always. <laughs> you know, there's probably some... <clears throat> Probably some SPs right now being like, why are we at the bottom? You know? <laughs> and SJs are being like, you know, you know, why can't we be at the top? We could be in charge of everything and that would be fa fantastic, you know. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Um, I, I, you know, I could say like, NF should be at the top because we're the most empathetic. So mm -hmm. I think we'd have the interest of all three in mind, you know, and we would be the best leaders. And NTs aren't necessarily known for their empathy, so having them at top could be potentially dangerous. <laughs> sure. You know. Well, it's interesting you should say that because I, the way I think about it isn't a grant of this, my own subjectivity, but I don't care if it's NF geeks. <laughs> um, is that I could live with, I could live with sharing power with the NTs, mm. you know, as equals, and I could live with even handing the reins over to them time to time because they may be more qualified to um, handle a problem. But um, I think I speak on behalf of all of NF that I would not want and nor would I allow NTs to rule over because um, NTs seem to create in the name of utopia um, technological nightmarish dystopias. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and um, I would not want them to be totally in charge. I would share power with NTs gladly, but I wouldn't want NTs completely in power. Right. So, you know, that would be, you know, you might as well just live in the Galactic Empire, where <laughs> everything is gray and black and white, and we live in giant Death Stars with bottomless pits <laughs> in them, you know. What was that point you made before where, um, I know oh, our IN, INTJ friend brought it up, where it was the NT should... Oh, yes, that's should, right. Should rule um, over the SJs. That's and right. And NF should rule over the SPs. That's right. Megatron. And actually, <laughs> step back a bit, a minute, a minute. I think a lot of times, too, I think it's interesting also that SPs are at the bottom of that list, uh, because in the first list I just mentioned, because I think, and, and this may be wrong, but um, my impression is, is that NTs seem to have uh, trouble with SPs more than SJs. And I think that NTs feel about the SPs a little bit the way we've been ribbing the SJs. Hmm. I think they, you know, there's that same sort of animosity, yeah. you know, that comes through. But our friend Megatron had a very interesting ordered society, um, and and it does create a balance of power. I'll say that for it. And in his balance of power, the NTs would have direct power over the SJs, and the NFs would have power over the SPs. Hmm. And his argument for that was is that um, the reverse cannot be true. SPs are not listening to NTs. Right. SJs aren't listening to NFs, and that's for sure. That's, that's <laughs> been established. Right. You know. But he said that SJs will listen to NTs because NTs provide the order and the structure that the SJs want to live in and maintain. Hmm. Okay, so they so they like that. And NFs give SPs a deeper soulful reasoning for their um, virtuosity in their skill or in the real power of their freedom of play. That we sort of give these, we sort of give the mavericks a reason to be a maverick beyond just being a maverick. You know, because yeah. SPs are kind of mavericks. And so we kind of give the mavericks something more to reach for. Mm. And so this, and so he thought that SPs would listen to NFs. And then you have this power balance going on where where sort of NFs and NTs sort of rule separate but equal. Right. You know. But even in that that's I'm gonna play devil's advocate with you, is that the N is seems to be superior to the S in this case. Yeah, that's right. And uh, <coughs> and there and there is a <laughs> you know, sort of an an arrogant attitude of Ns that of course all Ns would be Ns should rule over S's and, and all that. Um, yeah, I agree that, that, that this is still a hierarchy, you know, it's a balanced hierarchy because, uh, basically one could not, one side could not overthrow the other. Right. You know, the NTs and SJs could overthrow NFs because we're just big crybabies. 
right. but they couldn't throw both overthrow both NFs and SPs, and we couldn't do the same to them. So there's this balance. Um, all right, does that mean then, Dave, we need some sort of um, a, a perfect ordered society would have some sort of balance of power between the four temperaments? Right. Yeah. All right, what would that balance of power be? Because basically, it would be sort of like the way the relationship between uh, Congress and the Supreme Court and the presidency, where they all have um, different functions and yet some power over each other. Mm -hmm. You know, so what what would be sort of the balance of power between the four? Like, who should rule? Who should rule over whom? Who should have power over whom? Who should have freedom from whom? I don't. Um... I don't know if uh, I don't know if I would look at it like that. If it's going to be a completely balanced, if one should have freedom over another, one should rule over another. I think it would be like a completely um, uh, a completely equal thing, where like people would aspire to what they want to be, and and no one would necessarily oppress them not saying like the other that's how it would be in like the other examples you gave but um i don't know it's it's hard because you know it, it, it's difficult to say it really is because you could have each one just like rule over their other type and then you know have like a council of the four temperaments and meet and discuss like what all four provinces would do and all that stuff but you know that's idealized stuff and i don't necessarily know what would actually happen but i don't know it, it's really difficult to say i don't know how it would necessarily work i mean it works in real life hmm. but you but there's still conflict in real life, too. So I, I don't know if you could possibly rule out conflict. You know, people are going to... Of course they're going to disagree. You know, with different perspectives, you know. But... My, my answer would be, I don't know. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how you would structure uh, that, that society. Sure. All right. One possible setup I was thinking about is some sort of mutual, again, mutual power where you give up power to one and then you have power over another. Mm -hmm. So some cyclical thing where there's no, where one temperament isn't ahead, isn't on top of any other. So something like this, the NTs um, have power over the SJs. Mm -hmm. um, the SJs have power over the NFs. The NFs have power over the SPs and the SPs have power over the NTs in some way. And in that way, there's this complete balance. Where you where someone has power over you, but then you have power over somebody else. I mean, or as a as a group. And I realize the, the SPs having power over NTs is an NT nightmare. Right. Yes, <laughs> I understand that. Um, and believe me, we're not too happy about it ourselves with the SJs standing over us. But that might be helpful because you know what, the SJs might be able to keep us in line. Um, make us less lazy. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. we would make the SPs uh, care about what they're doing. <laughs> okay, and maybe the SPs would let the NTs loosen up a little bit. Yeah, you know, and the NTs would then provide that structure to the SJs, so we would have this sort of balance mm. um, going on. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, yeah, I agree with that, but uh, I, lo I lost my trail of thought. <laughs> so you can continue. Maybe I'll can, 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 catch up to it. Well, it seems, though, that um, if, assuming the Myers-Briggs has any validity, then organizing according to the Myers-Briggs seems the wisest position, and really people would be happier, I think, mm -hmm. if we organized everything around the Myers-Briggs, including relationships, everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean romantic relationships. I used it. It works. Yeah. Um, it, that if people were working according to their own temperaments and were fitting into society based on their temperaments, then maybe there would be more cohesion and less conflict amongst people. If people were doing what they were sort of meant to be doing in the place they were meant to be doing it. Right. You know, as opposed to, opposed to forcing everybody into something they're not ready for, or not, 
really, in, in terms of their temperament, built for. Right. I mean... But with that, we're out of time. We're out of time. All right. So, so I'm Dave. And I'm Mike. And we'll... Uh, we'll pick, pick this up. Pick this up later. Yeah.